Hello everyone and welcome back to the Steph Zone channel. If you're joining me here for the first time, I am so excited to have you. I realized that I haven't actually shown you some of the garments I've made in the last few videos and I wanted to correct that today. Specifically, since it's winter, I want to talk about outerwear and even more specifically, I want to show you some of the outerwear that I've made from vintage patterns over the last few years. I did a video over the summer of dresses I've made with vintage patterns, which you guys seem to really enjoy, so hopefully you're going to feel the same about this one. There's quite a few different types of garments to get through. Um, I'm, try I'm going to try and limit it to three, we'll see. Uh, but I have a wool wrap coat, a trench, a cape, so hopefully a bit of good variety there. However, before we get into this, there is one thing I want to make clear. Some of these garments were made quite a few years ago, and I didn't have the skills I have now, and I was also using a very basic machine. Perhaps even more importantly, I am a real human person whose body has changed over time, so sometimes the fit on these now is not the same fit as when I originally made them. If I see comments down below where people are saying things like, actually the pulling at your shoulder shows that you made this too small and you're bulging out of it, um, I'm not going to be super impressed by that. To be honest, I don't really like I don't really care. My actual career is much harder and more difficult than anything anyone can say to me in a YouTube comment. But I know it's really discouraging to other people, especially beginners who feel kind of unsure about whether they can show their projects to people. Um, so if that's your attitude, like, please go, you know, just go, go annoy somebody else. On the plus side, though, the fact that some of these garments are quite old means that I have replacement plans for many of them. For every pattern and garment that I show you, in addition to walking you through the construction and some of the mistakes I've made, I want to show you my plans for the next iteration of the garment, including fabric and patterns, which I have for all of them. These are going to be the more advanced version of each garment, which I'm hoping to make with some of the skills that I've acquired over the last few years of sewing. Um, I'm excited to bring you along for the ride, though, so let's get into it. First up, we're starting small, although I mean the garment itself is not very small, with this cape. I made this cape back in 2018, and it was my very first attempt of sewing outerwear with a lining. The garment itself is made from a very, very cheap <laughs> polyester wool blend that I got from a Walthamstow Market remnant bin. Um, I think I spent about five pounds for all of the fabric that was used for the outer shell of this garment. The lining, which is a, you know, it's very loud, it's a leopard print also comes from a Walthamstow Market Remnant bin and was probably about two pounds, so very, very cheap, less than 10 pounds for a piece of outerwear. Construction-wise, you don't really have very much going on here. There's panels for the front, for the sides, um, and for the back as well with these two shoulder darts. I'm not sure how easily you're gonna be able to see them. Um, there's a big collar and the armholes are fairly low down and these are just two slits. Um, I actually ended up hand sewing the outer fabric and the lining together just to keep it neat versus fussing with bagging out the lining. Um, beyond that, I just made these two tabs with and attached some big gold buttons to close it. And so these sit around here. The pattern itself is from a company called News of the World from the 1970s. Um, I really like News of the World patterns as far as vintage sewing patterns go. Based on my research, News of the World existed from around the 1840s until it closed in around 2010. Um, but I assume that they probably stopped doing sewing patterns well before 2010. The news of the world patterns that I've managed to find, and again, usually I'm collecting like 60s, 70s, a little bit early 80s, are often multi-sized, which is fantastic and not necessarily the case for pattern companies from that era. However, just because the pattern itself is so simple does not mean that there's no mistakes included in this. Firstly, the choice of the lining fabric. I gotta say, I mean, I, I'm in love with this leopard print. I think that that was a really good idea. But the viscose itself is very soft, it's almost brushed, and that makes it just not a great choice for a lining fabric. It kind of sticks to the clothing you're wearing underneath versus sliding off like you'd want it to. More importantly though, because the lining fabric is so cheap, it's pretty loosely woven, and that meant that I dealt with a lot of stretching and shifting as I attempted to sew the outer and lining fabric together. Even when cutting it out, it felt like the pieces would just keep expanding. You can really see here um, on the hem, I mean, I can see here, I don't know how obvious this would be to like a passerby, but there's just places where the hem bubbles a bit. It's really, really hard to get a good press in, and that's probably because the lining and the outer fabric aren't really matching up the way that they should. More importantly though, to the fabric, um, this style of cape is really cute, but it is very, very inconvenient to wear. Um, you look really sweet, you know, with the low armholes if you're just kind of standing like this. Um, but the moment you try and walk around in this, it slips off your shoulders. It's really inconvenient to wear a bag with. And, you know, again, I live in London. I'm walking and taking the tube everywhere. So 
I need to be able to move easily and I need to also be able to hold a bag in a way that doesn't look silly. However, I do love the fact that, you know, when you're wearing this, you're basically, you're basically just wrapped in a blanket. So that's a feeling I want to recreate in my next version. Therefore, for my next iteration, I'm looking at using this vintage Ann Adams pattern. And of course I'll do a close up of all of them. Now, I really feel like using an Ann Adams pattern is fitting because it was also sold through newspapers. Again, from the 1940s to I believe around the 1980s. I really recommend these patterns, um, especially because their cover art is just so pretty. They always have like just a line drawing of the garment with a nice bold colored background. The other thing I love about this pattern, and I've talked about this when referencing vintage sewing patterns before, is that um, I actually got the original envelope that it came in and I can see who the original owner was. This went to a Mrs. E. Ebert from St. Louis, Missouri. And she got this on September 5th, 1975. I don't know, I love those little details. It really makes me feel sentimental. Now, if we think about the garment more specifically, I really think this is gonna be a better fit for my wardrobe. For one, there's just a bit more openness around the armholes. So I think it's gonna have much more mobility than the green cape has. Um, but I also like that it has a tie at the waist, which is just going to hold it in place as I walk around. For fabric though, I'm a little bit unsure right now. Every part of my brain tells me like make this in a camel color or like maybe a gray or a navy, something neutral. But I do already have a beautiful bubblegum pink wool on hand, which I think could also be really, really cute. Um, I don't know, do I need a pink wool cape? I feel like I do. Um, alternatively, I do have some good options for tweed patterns and check. By the way, all the wools that I'm showing are from Rainbow Fabric Kilburn. They really have great options for wool, super affordable, but still, again, really decent quality. What do you think though? Um, either way, you know that I love the 70s, especially kind of big collared outerwear. So look out for a version of this come spring. Now, next up, we have this orange plaid wool wrap coat. Um, I made this from another wool blend, uh, but this one is much nicer, it's much better quality, and it came from Minerva Fabrics. Construction-wise, the garment itself is pretty simple. Um, it's a normal set-in sleeve, and you just have plain front and back pieces. There's darts at the shoulder, um, a dart at the bust as well. Some patch pockets that are hidden down here. See, that's good pattern matching. You can't immediately find the pocket, but there it is. Um, the pockets are actually big enough to fit an entire bottle of wine in. I'll put in a picture of me doing that. Um, but it's warm, it's cozy, and it's something that I've actually gotten a ton of wear out of. The pattern itself came from a company called Modella, and I love Modella for vintage patterns. They're some of my favorite 70s patterns from that company. Um, I believe it started in England and was around from the late 30s to sometime in the 80s, and I think that it was absorbed into new looks. Some of the more recent Modella patterns I have say Modella for new looks, so I assume that's where it went. Now, pattern matching is something that I really, I really don't enjoy doing, and I learned that from making this coat. Um, it is really worth, though, getting it right, just especially on something like a coat where you're going to want to wear it all the time, and I think that if I had made kind of really big, obvious mistakes, it would have bothered me. Um, in my case, I had these kind of key horizontal lines, which are these orange and their dark brown lines, and I tried really hard to balance them appropriately across the garment. However, I was so focused on doing that, that I accidentally cut out two right sleeves because I was cutting everything on a single layer, like tracing it really accurately. And I actually sewed them like into the garment and I was wondering like why my left arm was really trying to bend to the back and then I figured it out and was very upset. I was extra upset because um, I didn't actually have enough fabric left over to cut out the new left sleeve with the appropriate pattern matching. So I had to order another half meter and it was like the last half meter available Minerva had um, and they, it was not reorderable. So I'm so glad that that, that, that worked out. Um, but let that be a lesson to you. If you're trying to cut things out single layer, rather than mirror, mirroring the pieces, maybe just better to cut another pattern piece and avoid having to think about it. My tip to you. So as I said, I love this coat and it's gotten loads of wear, but there are still a few things that would make me want a new one. Firstly, it's just a bit small and there are warmer choices in windy, wet weather, I think, than a wrap coat. And in my next version, I really want something that is still double breasted maybe, but has buttons or snaps to hold it closed rather than just a belt. This does have a belt, the belt's in my room, I don't feel like going to get it. Um, but critically, I did not add belt loops. And even, I mean, I could have easily added those afterwards, but I haven't, you know, sue me. Um, the pattern didn't call for them, but I have left that damn belt in like four or five bars around London and it's like Sunday morning I go to like go get coffee and I realize that I'm missing the belt and I've like gone to bars like so far away to pick up that stupid belt 
and you know I, didn't, I don't have a choice because I can't get more of the fabric nothing else really matches this so lesson learned probably no more belts for jackets like this but if so I will add belt loops so everything stays together nicely. For my next version though I do want to make something that's also a solid color and slightly more parable than the orange plaid I used in this version. Um, I actually wear a lot of clothing with that palette, so matching it's not really a problem for me, but I do think something that's a solid color would just help fill that gap in my wardrobe. I'm actually planning on using another vintage Modella pattern. I like the idea of using the same pattern company between the two. And this one, again, it's a little bit um, slightly more complicated, not by a lot. We have um, a button closure, no, no, no more belts. Um, some nice curved seams, a raglan sleeve, and also this like the big chunky kind of rounded collar, which I did want to keep between the two versions. In terms of fabric, I know exactly what I want to use. And I have another wool fabric from Minerva. This one's a gorgeous deep, uh, deep red boiled wool. And for lining, I'm going to be using this black chest print fabric. Um, this came from Fabworks Mill Shop. I've mentioned them a few times, um, specifically in my video about my favorite fabric shops. And I think that it's going to be perfect. Um, it's 100% th synthetic, but the quality is great. It has a lot of body, a lot of structure, and I think it's really going to help the coat last. I love the color of the green lining, but I do think that it's just a little bit lightweight for something like a heavy wool coat. So hopefully again, the black will just make the whole thing feel a bit better and a bit sturdier. Given that we're in the thick of winter, this garment is the one that I'm prioritizing the most. So hopefully I'll be able to get it started, I think either this week or next week. So stay tuned because I think it's gonna be really elegant. Now, last but certainly not least, we have one of my greatest ever sewing triumphs. This jacket was actually only my second line coat. I actually made it before the orange plaid wool coat. And I was incredibly, incredibly out of my depth with this. Construction wise, there's quite a bit more going on. You have princess seams on the front and the back. There's darts that are coming out of that. Darts on the shoulders as well. Of course, a big old collar. You know, we always gotta have that for a 1970s garment. Um, welt pockets down here, as well as um, double, it's double breasted and has these, um, what are they called? Double welt buttonholes as well. Um, in terms of the fabric that I used, this was also a big source of challenge. Um, this fabric is Burberry raincoat dead stock. Well, I should say it's allegedly, allegedly Burberry de coating dead stock. Um, but I actually do believe the shop on this. Um, there is one shop on Gold Talk Road that has this. Um, they have this fabric, a few other kind of waxed cotton fabrics that are kind of clearly from high-end designers. The quality is amazing, especially. Um, they sell it at such an affordable price. Um, if you do want a video on my best Gold Talk Road shops, let me know. I'm happy to make one of those. Um, the pattern itself is from a company called Style that is, I believe that it's also long gone, so I'm very happy to have a few style patterns in my collection. So when I say I was out of my depth with this one, I really mean it. <laughs> I am enormously proud of this project, but I am fully, fully aware of the different flaws. Primarily, I think a lot of this was driven by the fabric, just because most of the techniques other than the buttonholes and the welt pockets were ones that I had done before. Um, when you're sewing with rainwear fabric, you really have to be careful um, with how you're sewing because, because of the coating on it. Um, not only is it really kind of crunchy and heavy, but every time you put a hole in it, the hole doesn't go, like the hole doesn't go away. So you see it. And so you can't really be like sewing it half-assed and then ripping a seam out, seam out because you're still going to be able to see the holes that you put. Um, similarly, as I said, the fabric is so heavy and stiff. And I was using a really basic machine and I didn't even know walking foots existed at the time. So there's a fair bit of wonky stitching in areas where um, you have multiple seams overlapping. Still though, I think it turned out really well. I was so proud of it. I'm still really proud of it. Um, especially again, those pockets and buttonholes, which I was really nervous to do. This is, I think, one of one of two garments that I've made a full twall of before getting started just because I was so nervous about it. And the fabric especially was you know, it's affordable for what it is, but it's not cheap. So I really wanted to get it right. The biggest mistake though is around the armholes. Um, these are set in sleeves and I probably would not recommend trying to do a set in sleeve with this type of fabric. Um, I did kind of try and adjust the armhole a bit, but in the process of easing in the sleeve, I got lots and lots of puckering around the armhole just because this fabric doesn't really like gather or sit nicely. I would probably do a raglan sleeve for the next iteration of the garment, which we'll talk about soon. So as much as I love that jacket, and I know I'm gonna keep wearing it, 
this combination of tricky pattern with a tough fabric is something I'm really looking forward to having another chance at. I've actually settled on this trench coat pattern from Practical Patterns and I just, uh, I love the cover art on this. In terms of comparing to the original jacket, there's quite a bit that's similar. You still have um, the big collar, it's still a 70s pattern, it's double breasted, there's welt pockets. Um, but I really like that A, it has a hood, which I definitely want in wet weather. And there's some other interesting details like the tabs on the shoulders and the sleeves. And most importantly, it is a raglan, <laughs> raglan sleeve. I do not want to mess with trying to insert um, rainwear fabric into a sleeve head ever again. In terms of fabric though, I'm actually going to make my life slightly more difficult than I did last time. And I'm going to use this teal dry oil skin from Merchant and Mills. Now, if you're not familiar, oil skin is a type of rainwear fabric or wet weather fabric, and it's basically cotton drill, cotton canvas that's been emulsified with wax. Um, and of course that's dried, so because, you know, they call it dry oil skin. In this, there's oil skins where you can kind of feel a waxy texture on the surface. Dry oil skin, you don't really, um, especially the Merchant and Mills ones, they're gorgeous, highly recommend. Um, but it's definitely gonna be a challenge to sew. Not only do you have the same issues with not being able to remove holes once you've put them in, you can't iron it. Um, actually, this uh, the beige trench fabric, I was able to iron that with a pressing cloth without leaving marks. Um, for the oil skin fabric, I'm gonna have to finger press every seam, or probably I think maybe I can use a tailor's press, um, I'm not sure. Um, but either way, I will probably get tired of that pretty quickly. So um, it's gonna be a slow burn project, you know? I'm gonna work on it over a few weeks, really take my time. My deadline though is that I want to have this done before the winter grey rain turns into the spring grey rain here in London. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video, in addition to hopefully giving you some vintage sewing pattern inspiration and some winter sewing inspiration, was also to highlight some of the little mistakes and issues my handmade garments have. In every single garment I've shown, there's been some mistake related to fabric choice, fit, finishing. I mean, in some cases, you know, there's a little, you know, more than one per garment. However, despite this, these are all garments that I love very much. I've gotten loads of wear out of them, except, I mean, maybe the cape I don't wear that much, to be fair, because it's inconvenient, but I learned a lot. So let this hopefully be a lesson to you that it's fine to just do something badly before you do it well. It's really unlikely that you're ever going to feel totally like ready to try a new type of sewing. And I often hear people talk about being scared of sewing with different types of fabrics or coat making, jeans making, swimwear sewing, you get it. Um, you can practice and try and build up to it, but at a certain point, you do really just need to rip the band-aid off if you wanna give it a go. Mistakes are gonna happen, but as long as you take your time and you're patient with yourself, the end result is still probably going to be something that you're excited to wear and could still last you a long time and be a great piece in your wardrobe. As always though, let me know in the comments down below which project you're most excited to see me tackle next. And I'd also love to know if there's any, you know, we'll call them small whoopsies with your handmade garments that you'd like to share. Hopefully that'll inspire other makers to realize that it's just not that serious, you know. Mistakes happen, give it a try. That's how you learn. If you do want to hear more from me, of course hit the subscribe button, but I'd also love if you join me over on Instagram where I'm at the same handle, just also Steph Zone. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye.